Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. If you recall, not too long ago I created a video about the SM Lite Zigbee coordinators and everything I said in that video I still stand by today. These devices are top of the line for so many reasons, for connectivity, for stability, for versatility, they can connect with Ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB, they work with Home Assistant out of the box. They're great, I'm using one of their devices for over a year now with zero issues. But I live in an apartment and I do have other Zigbee devices that are acting as routers or repeaters. If you have a large property, then you definitely need to, to have at least one coordinator for Zigbee connectivity, but you need to have several other devices as Zigbee routers or repeaters. And each one of these devices can be configured as a Zigbee coordinator or as a Zigbee routers. Spreading several, several, several of these in your property will get you settled with Zigbee coverage like no other today on the market. So this is what we're going to do today. We have a fresh instance of Home Assistant. We'll configure one of them as a Zigbee coordinator. The other one is a Zigbee router. Let's go. Alright guys, so I'm going to start with the full disclosure here. All the devices that I'm working with today were sent to me free of charge by SM Lite, but they're not sponsoring this video and all the opinions about the devices are completely my own. I stand by uh, my uh, opinions on them. They not only uh, met every one of my expectations, in certain areas they even exceeded it. I couldn't be happier with these devices. They're, in my opinion, top of the line. SM Lite does have a few other uh, models or several models they offer. They do a great job in explaining the differences between them and comparing them. They also do a good job in explaining uh, or ranking the chipsets that have certain models have in them. So you can make with just a little bit of research, you can reach the right conclusion on which device will be the best for you. Today I'm working with the SLZB 6 p 10 as the coordinator and the P7 as the range extender or router. Another quick note here, you might hear along the video some construction sounds, there's a lot of construction going on just next door and I really can't control it, so I apologize in advance. All right, let's get started. I'm going to go and plug in my SLZB uh, 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 Zigbee coordinator. And as you can see, we are, we are working with a fresh vanilla instance of Home Assistant. There is no ZHA right now configured. I'm going to plug in the device to PoE and we'll start and we'll, in, in a minute or two, we'll see it uh, discovered in Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and start that. All right, guys, as you can see, I've taken the device. In this case, it's the SM, SM Lite SLZB 06P10. I've connected it to my network, it's also powered by PoE, and now we're ready to start configuring it. Alright guys, so as you can see, it didn't even it, it didn't even take a minute, the device was discovered right here, but I'm not going to jump the gun here and start adding it to my home assistant. The first thing that I want to do, I want to find out which IP address the device got from my DHCP server, and then I'm going to go inside the web interface, I want to set the st a static IP address for the device. We do not want our Zigbee coordinator to change its IP address uh, uh, when uh, I know when something happens. We, in order to get a rock solid network, we need to set the uh, the Zigbee coordinator with a static IP address. So I already found the IP address, and also I do want before I get started to uh, uh, update the firmware on the device to the latest firmware available right off the bat before anything is configured. So let's go ahead and start. This is the web interface. Let's go ahead, go into mode. This will be our Zigbee coordinator. That's great. I am going later on to enable the Bluetooth proxy, but I don't know if I'll use it. My connection mode is indeed Ethernet, but we can change it to Wi-Fi. In, in fact, uh, I will try to, uh, to show it maybe in this video, maybe in another video. But this device, these devices can be configured as a Ethernet connection, Wi-Fi connection, or even directly with a USB, like a USB dongle. All right, let's go ahead to network. Let's change it from DHCP to the exact IP address that we want the device to have. In my case, 
This will be the IP address and of course the gateway. DNS is fine. And let's click on save. All right, guys, I'm just going to share with you a, a little glitch that I encountered before I just click on clicked on save, but nothing would happen. It, it was completely malfunctioning. So what I did, and I will show you, of course, how to do it. I went and upgraded the firmware to a newest firmware. And now I went back to the network tab, placed all my uh, previous uh, data, like the IP address and the gateway. And now when I click on save, I do get a prompt uh, to reboot and go to the new IP address, which is what expected. So if you encountered, if you encounter that behavior, just go ahead and update your firmware. Now I'm going to wait for the device to finish the rebooting and I will go to the new IP address. Oh, it even, even take a minute and it did it automatically for me, which is a great touch. And guys, just a little note from the future, I'm adding in editing in, we will touch on it more thoroughly later on, but in order to update the firmware on your device, you'll just need to go into settings and tools, firmware update, check core updates, check Zigbee updates, do the latest uh, to the latest firmware and Zigbee updates you, you can find. And that's it. We will see it in action in a bit. So now with the new firmware installed, if I go to mode, we can see that now we can even turn our device to the matter over thread sort of coordinator or a, a edge router. And that's a great touch from SLZB. So now the device, there are a lot of other things to configure. We are not going to go through all the uh, options in the web UI. If you want to see that, please go to my previous video I did about a, an overview of the SLZB devices. And I will put a link to this video in the top right corner. Now that the device is configured with a static IP address, now I want to go to my Home Assistant and configure it on the Home Assistant side. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go to Settings, Devices. The SLZB entry is waiting for us, so let's click on Add. Let's click on Submit. And click on Finish. Great. The device is ready and uh, the SLZB integration, that is. And now we want to uh, add the, the Home Assistant ZHA integration, which is what I usually use with Home Assistant. So let's go to Settings, Devices, Add Integration, ZHA. All right, when we encounter this menu right here, it's, it's, more, it's easier than you think to figure out which option you need to select here. For example, if I'll go back to the SM Lite uh, sort of portfolio website, this is our device that we're using as a coordinator right here. And we can see that the chipset is the CC2674P10. If I'll go to my home assistant, I can see that this will be the relevant option for us to use. So let's click that and click on submit. And in terms of what we need to enter here, Let's go to our SLZB device web interface, Z2M and ZHA. Let's select ZHA. And this is exactly the string. The SMLI device gives us the exact string we need to enter right here. So let's click on submit. Great. Now we have the ZHA contact successfully our coordinator and just to be on the safe side we'll select to erase network settings and create a new network all right guys so i i, I do have to uh, to uh, share with that the process for me took about three a good three or four minutes that i needed to wait so just be patient it will finish successfully all right so as we can see we have a success message right here and we have our ZHA integration ready and configured, which is great. Here it is right here. So right now we are ready to start adding Zigbee devices to our network. If I'll go to my entry here, my Texas Instruments entry right here, I can start adding a device via this device. And if, I'll, if I had a Zigbee device in front of me 
ready to be paired it will find it we will do it later on after we after we add we'll add our uh, uh, zigbee router so right now our, our zha is completely configured and now it's time to take my second slzb device in this case it will be the slzb 06 p7 i'm going to connect it in another portion of my apartment again with poe but they will be relatively uh, about i don't know 10 meters from each other but we, it will simulate a real life environment so i'm going to pause the recording and do that and come back once it's done all right so while the device that is now going to be configured as a zigbee router is booting up i do want to go back to my zigbee coordinator device and just run a, just to make sure i don't have any other firmware updates we'll go into the web interface we'll go into firmware updates let's check for core updates i'm not going to bother with dev kind of firmware updates at least not yet let's stick with a, a, a with the stable ones we are all already on the latest firmware updates so that's great if you're not flash it when once done let's check for zigbee updates we are with the zigbee coordinator and we are on the latest firmware update that's great all right let's go to the new device the device that is going to be our zigbee router i already got its ip address for my dhcp server let's open the web interface all right so i switched over to my new slzb06 device this device is going to be my zigbee router the first thing i want to do before doing anything is firmware updates so again let's go to settings and tools firmware updates check core updates and let's flash the new at least to date 2.7.1 let's flash it and let's wait for it to do its thing it shouldn't take long maybe a minute maybe two i'm going to pause the recording right here and resume it once this is done all right so the device has rebooted already it's now in the new firmware update but I do want to still go back to the firmware updates and check for Zigbee updates. And let's see what we find. Let's flash to the new Zigbee. Even though this device is not going to be a coordinator at the end of the process. But I do want to make sure at least, at least it has the most uh, recent Zigbee firmware. Right. Now that the device has been updated, we are going to go to the, de to the mode, sorry. And we're going to change it from Zigbee Coordinator to Zigbee Router. Now it gives it gives us a warning that it's going to sort of flash a different kind of firmware, a coord a, a, a router firmware. Just roll with it, click on next, and change mode to Zigbee Router. That's fine. And we're done. It was again less than a minute. We are now in Zigbee Router mode. Don't forget, just like the Zigbee coordinator, we are going to change the network from DHCP to a static IP address. Alright, so now that we have entered all the relevant details in terms of IP and gateway, let's scroll down and click on save. Reboot and go to the new IP address. That's great. Again, this will probably take less than a minute. All right, the device has been rebooted and actually we are done with both of the SLZB devices web interfaces. I'm going to go back to my home assistant instance and just for good measure, I'm also going to restart this one. Just for good measure, it's not really mandatory. I like to do it just so the, the, the home assistant identifies freshly the SLZB devices in terms of the SMLight integration, nothing more than that. Alright, so Home Assistant has started. We do have a notification that a new device was discovered. Let's check it out. It discovered the, the, the SMLight integration found the new router device. So let's click on add definitely. Great. And now it's time to actually make the binding between the SLZB coordinator device and the router device. 
For now, we only have the route, the coordinator device. To do the binding, we, we go back to the router device web interface. And in the web interface of the Zigbee router device, we are going to go into settings and tools, general settings, and we have a button router reconnect we'll click on that the process will be completely transparent we will not see anything it will be very quick and in fact right now if we we'll switch to our home assistant let's go to that and let's refresh our page after a minute or two it will happen you see now i have three devices in zha the sec or the newest device is the slzb 06P7 that I configured as a Zigbee router. So even if you click on router reconnect and you don't see any change in ZHA, just give it some time and then maybe give it, I don't know, just to be safe, five minutes. At the end, you will see the device under ZHA. In fact, now it's the time to test everything is working. I'm going to take a Zigbee device. In this case, it will be a Zigbee smart plug and I'm going to connect it at least the farthest I can. It will be just around 10 meters away from the router, so it's not a simulating very large distances, but the process is exactly the same. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm in my kitchen. I'm going to take this Zigbee smart plug, and I'm going to connect it at least the farthest I can from the Zigbee router. Sorry, it will be this outlet. Right here, let's connect the smart plug. And also let's make sure it's in pairing mode. So let's click on this button at least three seconds. All right, so now it's in pairing mode. Let's go back to our computer and start the pairing in ZHA. All right, so in ZHA, we are going to select our Zigbee router and then we're going to select these three dots right here. Add a device via this device. Make sure your device is in pairing mode, so we'll make sure that. And just like that, our device was already paired and it's ready to go. If we click on back and back. We have our device right here. We can turn it on, turn it off. It's completely connected or paired via the Zigbee router and not the coordinator. So guys, this is how to take two SM Lite SLZB devices, which again are top of the line. Configure one of them as a Zigbee coordinator and one as a Zigbee router to increase your range and coverage to create a rock solid Zigbee network. Alright guys, if you like this video, please give this video a like and subscribe. Just by doing these two simple things, you will be doing the, the channel a huge favor and I'll see you all in my next videos.